Hey folks, here are OS Reviews. You're watching our video review of the LG Lucky, also known as the L16C. This is a track phone prepaid device that's selling online for only 30 bucks, which is extremely inexpensive. And the C stands for a CDMA as opposed to GSM. So technically this isn't a phone that you can use in terms of world roaming or traveling with. However, at 30 bucks, it is extremely inexpensive and LG has incorporated some more advanced software cues that we didn't expect on such a low cost phone. And one of those is knock code. As you can see, you can double tap anywhere on the screen to turn the phone off or on. And we didn't expect again to see that on such a low cost device. In terms of specs, it's definitely low cost, low end. And the phone has a Snapdragon 200 processor, which is dual core clocked at 1.2 gigahertz, not that bad, but RAM is only 512 megabytes, which is quite low. And that makes multitasking and playing back games a bit of a challenge. But uh, the biggest limitation arguably of the LG Lucky is the screen because even though it's 3.8 inches, which is pretty good as far as uh, budget oriented phones are concerned, it's not 3.5 inches or even smaller. It basically is around nearing that four inch border, which we consider to be pretty good. The Lucky it does have a very low resolution of 480 by 320, which is, uh, it will show off a lot of different pixels. It's not going to be very dense. The colors are also not too saturated, as you can see, uh, and viewing angles are not that hot, as you can see. So if you tilt the phone, it, it becomes not very readable from, from above. Not that big of an issue, but if you are playing back some games or using the accelerometer and not looking at the phone's display dead on when you're interacting with the apps, it does make the experience not as great as some other offerings, even in the same price bracket. So I wanted to quickly point that out. Otherwise, a pretty nicely constructed phone, even though it is made out of plastic, it feels solid in the hands, and it does have four gigs of built-in storage, even though it still is a bit low. You only have about 1.5 gigs accessible to the user, so downloading a few apps will quickly fill that space up, and you will definitely need a micro SD card to take full advantage of the phone. Otherwise, on the back, there is a 3.0 megapixel fixed focus camera, no LED flash, no vanity mirror, unfortunately, but it does support uh, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, GPS. There are 3G radios underneath, no 4G, unfortunately. Um, battery life is also very good, as you would expect from a phone that doesn't have as powerful internals, and it runs on Android 4.4 KitKat, which is not the latest operating system, but also stable enough to be used and to download any apps you would really want on a modern day smartphone. So taking a look at closer at the design here, you have access to a speaker on the back, which gets very loud, even though it is a mono speaker and we do wish it was on the front, but uh, again, very low cost. So not too much to complain about. The bottom features a micro USB port for charging and syncing. There's a power on off switch on the right hand edge, which we do like because it's very easy to press uh, as opposed to, let's say, on the very top, which some taller phones tend to put uh, their power keys on, which we don't love. There's also a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the top, as well as a volume rocker on the left hand spine, which is tactile, responsive, and easy to press as well. There are dedicated capacitive controls in the bottom, which correspond to the home key, the back key, and the multitasking key. These keys are not backlit, but they do have a very reflective uh, mirror finish to them. And there's also a earpiece on the very top. This is using a capacitive touchscreen display, which is very responsive and easy to use, but it doesn't have a corny Gorilla Glass finish, so it does feel a bit more plasticky as opposed to a very solid glass uh, experience. It's probably more of a plastic uh, injected component to it rather than a pure glass experience. But overall, a pretty good, lucid, nearly stock experience on board as far as software as well. You can see that LG has definitely put on their own skin, but as far as apps are concerned, there isn't too much, um, you know, too much bloatware going on. Uh, it's mainly the stuff that you really want. Like Google services are all on board, which is nice to see. Of course, LG has done, you know, their customization, uh, which they always tend to do on their phones, but. Um, it's not too much of a bad thing on here. Things are pretty organized and the icons are nice and large and easy to press on. So it's gonna make for a great option for maybe the elderly or also for kids. If you don't want to have too expensive of a phone, it can also be a backup device. Uh, you can create different folders for your applications. There is a camera app here, gallery app, Google Maps is built in. Other applications that are pre-installed, which are typically not found, I, I would say on a phone would include uh, McPhee security. There's also a uh, mobile device manager by TrackPhone, my account by TrackPhone. 
And there's also a voice command app, YouTube, which comes standard, as well as like that traditional settings. Also been customized by LG with the icons and the graphics. You can change the lock screen gestures, double tapping, uh, putting the phone face down to interact uh, and, and launch certain applications. There's also a guest mode, which is kind of interesting. Basically, it allows you to um, put down a restricted version of the UI, so you only have certain apps like dialing, maybe web browsing, if someone wants to use your phone, um, and when you're done, you simply unlock it with a pin, and you're back to the full version of, of the device. So it has a pretty nice intuitive software suite on here, a lot of different customization options that, again, we don't expect on such a low-cost phone, which is nice to see. And it's certainly an area where the LG Lucky bests its predecessors as well as other competitors by companies like let's say uh, Pantech, Kyocera, uh, or Sanyo, um, similar devices that don't have as much of a rich software skin. There's also printing options for connecting over Wi-Fi. Taking a look about the phone, we can check out the status of the software. So again, it is KitKat 4.4.2. And you can see there it runs pretty smoothly as far as most tasks are concerned. The interface is nice and lucid as well as responsive. It will slow, uh, slow down occasionally if you are loading up two complex sites uh, using the web browser or if you're multitasking between multiple games and apps, it will definitely slow down. But for day-to-day -day usage, very basic tasks, it, you won't really notice much of a hiccup. Uh, so it still seems pretty responsive and lucid. Um, again, it does depend on how much apps you install with that limited memory. If you install too many, it will start to slow down and freeze a bit and you have to move your apps to the SD card. But if not, you don't want to plan on uh, playing too many games or doing too much aside from the occasional web browsing, text messaging, and, and dialing, then you should be fine. The call quality on this phone is pretty good, I have to say that the reception here in, uh, at least here in the Seattle region, was decent, and we seem to be always in an area where we got three or four bars, call quality was nice and crisp, the speakerphone was a bit sharp and tinny, but overall still does the job respectably, and the same can be said about the reception um, and also listening back to music with the speaker on the back. So pretty good call quality overall. Again, battery life is very good, uh, three to four days. That was about the average result that we received. Taking a quick look at some other things that you can do, let's say with this phone, the drag down notification drawer, again, has been customized by LG. So you can launch some of their uh, quick shortcuts like memo, allows you to doodle and interact with the screen very quickly to create annotations. Let's say you wanna exit out of that. Toggle Wi-Fi on and off, data on or off, the accelerometer, Bluetooth, edit and change the icons being displayed. There is no proximity sensor, so you have to, um, also no ambulant light sensor, so you have to change the brightness of the screen yourself. The brightness does get pretty, pretty, pretty bright, so if you're outdoors and in direct sunlight, you can still read the display to a nice extent, I would say. So not too many issues in that department. Taking one last quick look at the web browsing experience on board here, we're gonna launch the Chrome browser, which we are excited to see is pre-included here. Uh, it works nicely, you have tab browsing, you also have incognito browsing. The built-in keyboard here has been altered by LG. We're decent fans of this keyboard. Uh, the spacing and the overall format is nice and easy to use. So if we wanted to type on something like New York Times. There we go, there is predictive entry. We can tap on, let's say the first link that pops up. This is probably gonna load up the mobile site. As you can see, there's a bit of sluggishness going on, but it's not bad. We're connected using Wi-Fi right now and speeds do seem to be pretty good. If you're wondering about this icon on the side, that is an, ac uh, an accessibility widget that is pre-installed and allows you to quickly launch some shortcuts and you can toggle that on or off in the settings. Taking a look at the desktop version, let's check out how long it takes this to load. So a bit longer, but not bad. Most elements are fully loaded, including your images, some flash content and some interactive contents on, on here as well. New York Times is a very complex site, so it does show that the phone is good enough to handle some pretty advanced web browsing as well. You can pinch and zoom, and that remains a fairly lucid experience, let's see after the page is loaded, and text does reflow uh, accordingly after you have loaded up the page again. There is again a uh, tab browsing, but I would recommend only use three or four tabs because if you open up too many, that it does get a bit more sluggish and the phone will slow down. 
So at the end of the day, the LG Lucky for track phone users is a pretty good budget-oriented choice as far as performance is concerned. It does a nice job. It has all the connectivity options and the features that you would want, coupled with pretty advanced software that we didn't expect from such a low-cost LG phone. With that being said, the display quality is not as good as other phones even in the same price bracket. And we would have liked to see perhaps a slightly larger display at four inches uh, that would have been a bit nicer as well. But overall, it's a nice solid choice for track phone uh, purchasers out there that are on a tight budget. To learn more information about this handset, be sure to read our full written review. This has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This is the LG L160 or the LG Lucky.